Jesus says to him, Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hands and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Something happened in Thomas's heart immediately. My Lord and my God. Just over 75 years ago, Adolf Hitler was Chancellor of the Third German Reich. He had sold the great mass of German people on the idea of him being sovereign. Nobody else but him. They must see him as one supreme leader whose authority was not to be questioned. His orders were to be followed implicitly. The people were to love him, obey him, virtually even to worship him. And so they would say, Hail Hitler! Worshipping him. Soon, in their devotion to him, terrible things started to happen in this nation. Those who questioned his authority were silenced. Opponents were sent to forced labor camps. Jews were sent to death camps. Preachers who dared to protest against his law were beaten and imprisoned. Church buildings were burned. It was time in Germany when terror reigned supreme. But in a town called Berlin, there was a German preacher named Martin Nihola, who was a small man in size, but big in other ways. He had also been a U-boat captain during World War I and had much courage for the Lord. So one Saturday, he got together with his team um, all the billboards in the city and he plastered on the billboards an advertisement for his Sunday morning service. He plastered on the subject of his message and the time and address. The service was going to start at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. By 7 a.m. There was no standing room in that church. Every bit of space was taken up by people wanting to hear, wanting to listen. What is his message, message was about? Following the message and the sermon, he was arrested and spent the remaining years of Hitler's reign in a labor camp. He was denied all contact with the outside world. What was his sermon title? What was his message? It was simply this, Christ is my Lord. In German, it would have been Christ is my Führer, Supreme Leader. Christ is my Supreme Leader. Christ is my Lord. Just the title of that message caused him to be put in prison for many, many years. Because he had the conviction that not Hitler, but Christ was his Lord. And he was prepared to go to jail for that. Is he your Lord? 402 times in the New Testament, you'll find some form of the word Lord used in regard to Jesus Christ. Take the text that we are using this morning. It was, dear brothers and sisters, a very significant tribute that Thomas paid to Jesus when you consider what Thomas was like. He was a man who had to be shown, who said he would not believe, he could not believe until he saw with his own eyes, unless he could see and touch the wounds and put his hands into the gash in Jesus' side. But when Thomas came walking 
into that service at night, he least expected what he was going to experience. Jesus came walking through the bolt and barred doors and held out his hands to him and said, Thomas! And Thomas cried, My Lord and my God. Another tribute to Jesus was paid by Mary Magdalene. Just after the resurrection at the tomb, you'll read that in John 20, verses 11 and 13, 11 to 13. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they have put him. My Lord. Think what those words really mean. As long as God stayed in heaven, he seemed far away, remote, impersonal. But then in Jesus, God came down where I am. For the Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And so God came down. God came down and Jesus Christ became our Savior, my Lord and my God. Your Lord and your God. And now we have a personal relationship with Him that will last forever. It's just not the church's Lord. It's not just the Bible's Lord. It is my Lord. I want you to take ownership over him today is my Lord and my God. In one of the great chapels in Rome, there's an amazing fresco by a man called Guido called Aurora. For many years, people looked at this fresco and they had to do it in a very difficult manner with their heads back and their necks strained and uh, sometimes it would be very painful position to really appreciate this full scope and beauty of this painting. Finally, somebody thought of a good idea and they brought in a mirror and placed it in the center of the floor. Now all you have to do is to stand around the handrail and look down and see the beauty of this fresco reflected in the mirror. That was a brilliant idea, very simple. In like manner, Christ came to, to mirror God. You see, we can't see Him. We can do whatever we want. We will never be able to see Him. People try in so many ways to see God. But Christ became the mirror. The mirror to God Himself. Hebrews 1.3 tells us that Jesus represents God. It says, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. So when you see Jesus, you see God. Amen. And that is why Jesus said, no man can come to the Father except he comes through to me. And a lot of people are searching for God. You know, most people have some idea that there has to be a God and they're searching for God and they call him different names and they call him, go to him in different ways but brothers and sisters no matter how sincere they may be if they are calling him by the wrong name he is not God he is not Jehovah and so we have to be absolutely clear about this People say we can call him any name. No, you can't. Because Jesus said, you cannot come to the Father except through me. So that means if you want to know God, you must go to Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Not anybody else. 
So Jesus Christ came to be that mirror. You know, in the mirror, you can't change things. Whatever the mirror says, it's true. And that is why sometimes you don't like to look at the mirror. Because it tells you everything that you don't like to see. But if you really want to see God, Christ appears in that form for you. I believe therefore, all his declarations, I believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, the miracles that he did here on earth, establish in our hearts and minds his personal authority. Uh, all of this is proper for every one of us to believe whatever our circumstances. And therefore, as he declares himself to be the Son of God, it is no wonder that we have so much of contradiction today by so many different theologians about this. People who think they know so much about the Bible and try to dissect the Bible. But brothers and sisters, let's believe the old time gospel. Let's believe the old time teaching. Jesus Christ is our Lord. He is our soon coming King. He is our Lord and our God. Our physical eyes can't see God. So God made a mirror. And, and in Jesus Christ, we see the very image of God. A great man by the name of Daniel Webster is said to have been one of the greatest minds and one of the greatest speakers that the United States has ever produced. In the back of Daniel Webster's own personal Bible, he wrote these words. I believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. The miracles which he wrought has established in my mind his personal authority and it renders to me to believe whatever he says. I believe. We believe everything that he says. But many people call him Lord and don't really mean what they are saying. You see, a name carries a spirit with it. A name carries authority with it. The name Lord is not only name, but also the title that he carries. He is Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Many other people have taken that and given themselves title. The British government gives people a knighthood and calls them Lord. You know, men and women call Lord and Lady and all of that. No, that's wrong. Nobody else is Lord. In fact, Christians in the early century would give their lives a ransom simply because they were told, say, Caesar is Lord. And they said, no, we will rather die than mention those words. Only Jesus Christ is Lord. So today, many, many people want to carry that title, Lord. Nobody can. Only Jesus Christ is our Lord and our God. Jesus asked in Luke 6 and verse 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say? Much of the church will say, Lord, and they will cry. Jesus is saying to you today, why do you call me Lord and do not do the things that I say? How about you this morning? You see your Savior and your Lord? You cannot call him Lord and then still say, wait, Lord. I'm going to pray about this, Lord. It's a contradiction. When you speak to the Lord, it's, it's always, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not I'll pray about it. Not I'll wait till my children get older and get married. Or uh, let my parents, you know, I've got some old parents. I want them to die first. And then when they die, then you can tell me to do anything you want. When Jesus is Lord, it means you answer 
is called there and then. You can't pray about it. You can't go to any prophet and ask him for some word for you. Because he is the final word. And when he tells you to do something, that's the word. So is Jesus Christ your Lord?